Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this morning, Perry and Tyler and myself, myself, got on my silver fox hat. We're at the, uh, gonna be the start of the Willow 300 dog sled race. So, first time for any of us coming to this event, so kind of a new experience. And this is also the same place where they, uh, where they start the Iditarod too. So of course this is a qualifier race for the Iditarod. So um, quite a few of the people in this, you know, will be uh, running the Iditarod as well. But very cool. Hi. Right. We got lots of lots of mushers out here getting their uh, hey, good morning. arriving and getting their gear ready to go. A lot of the, a lot of the dogs barking. You can see a lot of the teams over there as well. It's, uh, I'm actually, clear a lot more snow out of here for the uh, for the Iditarod, but this is not not as big of an event as it is. But there's probably more more teams racing in this. I'm gonna guess. But I think the Iditarod only has about. Uh, Last I seen was about 30 or 35 teams signed up for it, so so it's uh, pretty cool. But they leave out of here at uh, nine o'clock, so we got about an hour or so here. But probably still going to be dark whenever they take off. But whenever they do leave out, they'll be going, you know, down this here and uh, across the lake and then on out to the so we sit in the river and up that way. So. Well, that's kind of kind of neat. Watching all these people get ready. People putting clothes on. People putting jackets on their dogs. Putting harnesses on them. Getting them ready to go. That's pretty cool. I and mean, if it was daylight, we could see it all a little bit better. But a lot of neat teams here. A lot of dogs barking. pretty cool how calm a lot of the dogs are. I think this many, this much excitement going on, they'd all be going crazy, but they seem to be just used to it. These dogs here just got them all a snack. Untangling harnesses, laying harnesses out. It's amazing to me how calm a lot of these dogs are. I guess they're just so used to it. The whole team of them standing right there. He's nice and quiet. He came and he would say my border collie I had to put down. Surprising. He came and she looked better than that big Most of the dogs you see here are Alaskan Huskies. Brandon came over shortly after. Hmm. Pretty neat the uh, trailers and stuff they have set up. See these dogs still sitting in there, calmly waiting for their turn to get out. Pads down for us to sit on over there, keep them warm. Good care of their dogs. Very cool. This is, so there's two teams. They got one team on this side of the truck, one team on the other side. Sit there nice and calm while they're getting their harnesses put on. All 
kinds of names out here. Scott Jensen, mushing mortician. <laughs> A little better lighting down here. I've only seen one dog get loose so far. Now, last year with the Abita rod when I was down here uh, because of COVID, um, nobody was allowed to get around any of the uh, support people or any of the uh, mushers because of the, all, the, all those guys had to be um, vaccinated and stuff because of all the villages that they were going through. So I don't know if that any of that applies this year. I haven't heard anything about it, but obviously you're a little bit freer to get closer to the mushers and stuff like that than, uh, than we were at uh, Diderod last year. So the, the, the Diderod's coming up here in another uh, month and a half or so. So we'll see what it's like this year. I got one little fellow here that's pretty vocal. How funny to watch him.
kind of light enough. Now you can actually see up on this end of the parking lot. So this is the twin sisters here again that will run this and also run that bitter rod as well. I need to meet some of them, they're awful friendly. Pretty cool, they got a lot of dogs. She said they had 20, I believe she said 24 dogs still at home. And then obviously here they got uh, 28 dogs here. I don't know if they have any spares in there or not, probably not. 14 for each team. And this is a, uh, this is the back side of the community center. I'm going to show you how deep the snow is around the, around the building here. They'll probably clear out a little bit more of this when it's time for that did a rod. But you need to see the uh, playground equipment uh, buried in the snow. Hook up the, some of the dogs on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the lead, so we're starting to get a little more vocal now. This is where the dog teams will come down across here, go out across the lake. That's Willow Lake. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. We're playing up on the snow pile. We're going to go and watch them hooking up some, hooking up some rides. I'll just do, like, to ask you, uh, if you feel the elaborate Oh, it was my fun. They definitely start getting excited when they see get others getting hooked up on the leads. Probably about, I don't know, looks like probably about 40, 40 teams here. 14 dogs on a team, so it's a lot of dogs. They have the uh, sleds, most of them tied to the trucks to keep them held still while they're getting them all hooked up. Machine hooked to the back of the sled there as they come up to bring them down to the starting lines and stuff to use the, use the uh, snow machine to hold them back. So a little scuffle going on there.
starting line is. This gets pretty loud. Brakes to keep them slowed down. All beautiful. Those two is out, folks. Let's get them going across the road. Fourteen dogs on a team. They're headed, right, headed across the lake now. So we got done finding my footing here. We got kind of chunky here, green snow on top of a hard tack, and then we got a freeze on top of that. And that They're bringing up another team. Tell me when it's close, Abby. I'm not sure where they're at on this one here. I'm going to bid a rod. They give them, start them in uh, two minute intervals. So, probably about the same for this, I would imagine. And another team coming up there. Right. How do you get your 
There's the next team coming up to the starting line. Like here's also a seaplane lake, we do they land on the water here all the time, so. We go up here and see if we can watch them actually bring them to the line. You can see us in the back of Folks, bid number four, Travis Vanderhoof. So we're starting to get Y'all got two minutes, don't go to fall. Let's see how many people it takes to uh, bring them up to the starting line. See the snow machine tied to the back of the sled. That's how they ease them up in the starting line, then they can get their brakes and stuff set. So, give you an idea how much power they actually have. That you know, half a dozen, half a dozen people can't. Uh, it's a, half a dozen people can't keep them held back by themselves. So. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Yeah. Well, they say my real calm. I said she's with the, the younger ones that are so excited. Keep him separate.
the next time. There they go. And she's off on a 300 mile run. There's a lot of women in the dog mushing.
this is all dog food here. It has everybody's name written on it. And then they'll haul that out there. I guess there were different stopping places. You can see like that in there has a Mackey on it. And that one's going to the Forks Roadhouse. I guess that's one of the stops. And you can see over there one of the, the Bering sisters, one of theirs, pet it. Um, a lot of those names are ones you'll see in the uh, I did a rod. You know, the Mackey, Bering, Pettit. Um, lots of those names will be in the I did a rod. majority of them on the trail. There's still a few here yet to go. We got one over here. He keeps howling. He's like, when is it going to be my turn? When do I get to go?